Poems Every Child Should Know. Edited by Mary E. Burt. Section 25. Read for LibriVox.org by Kara Schallenberg. This section contains two poems, To a Mouse and To a Mountain Daisy. Part 2 continued. To a Mouse on Turning Up Her Nest with the Plow. November, 1785. To a Mouse and To a Mountain Daisy by Robert Burns, 1759 to 1796, are the ineffable touches of tenderness that illumine the sturdy ploughman. The contrast between the strong man and the delicate flower or creature at his mercy makes tenderness in man a vital point in character. The lines To a Mouse seem by report to have been composed while Burns was actually ploughing. One of the poet's first editors wrote, John Blaine, who had acted as godsman to Burns, and who lived sixty years afterward, had a distinct recollection of the turning up of the mouse. Like a thoughtless youth as he was, he ran after the creature to kill it, but was checked and recalled by his master, who he observed became thereafter thoughtful and abstracted. Burns, who treated his servants with the familiarity of fellow labourers, soon afterward read the poem to Blaine. Wee, sleekit, cowerin, timorous beastie, O, oh, what a panic's in thy breastie! Thou needna start away sa hasty, Wi' bickerin' brattle. I wad be laith to rin and chase thee, Wi' murderin' prattle. I'm truly sorry man's dominion Has broken nature's social union, And justifies that ill opinion, Which makes thee startle at me, Thy poor earth-born companion, And fellow mortal. I doubt na, whiles, but thou may thieve, what then, poor beastie, thou mun live? A dame a nicker in a thrave, so small request. I'll get a blessin' with a lave, and never missed. Thy wee bit housey too in ruin, it silly was the winds are strewin, and naething now too big a new en, a foggage green, and bleak December's winds ensuin, baith snell and keen. Thou saw the fields laid bare and waste, and weary winter comin fast, and cosy here beneath the blast, thou thought to dwell, till crash the cruel coulter passed out through thy cell. That wee bit heap o' leaves and stibble has cost thee money a weary nibble, now thou's turned out for a thy trouble, but house or howled, to thole the winter sleety dribble and cranroch called. But, Mousie, thou art no thy lane, in proving foresight may be vain, the best laid schemes o' mice and men gang aft a glay, and lee us naught but grief and pain for promised joy. Still thou art blessed, compared wi' me, the present only toucheth thee, but, och, I backward cast my a on prospects drear, and forward, though I cannot see, I guess and fear. Robert Burns to a mountain daisy, on turning one down with the plough in April, 1786. Wee, modest, crimson-tipped flower, thou's met me in an evil hour, for I'm on crush among the store thy slender stem. To spare thee now is past my power, thou bonny gem. Alas, it's no thy neighbour sweet, the bonny lark companion meet, bending thee mong the dewy wheat with speckled breast when upward springing blithe to greet the purpling east. Called blew the bitter biting north upon thy early humble birth, yet cheerfully thou glinted forth amid the storm, scarce reared above the parent earth thy tender form. The flaunting flowers our gardens yield, high sheltering woods and was mon shield, but thou beneath the random beeld, a clod or stain, adorns the histy stibble field, unseen a lane. There in thy scanty mantle clad, thy snowy bosom sunward spread, thou lifts thy unassuming head in humble guise. But now the share uptears thy bed, and lo thou lies. Such is the fate of artless maid, sweet floweret of the rural shade, by love's simplicity betrayed, and guileless trust, till she, like thee, all soiled is laid low in the dust. Such is the fate of simple bard, On life's rough ocean luckless starred, 
unskilful he to note the card of prudent lore, till billows rage and gales blow hard and whelm him o'er. Such fate to suffering worth is given, who long with wants and woes has striven, by human pride or cunning driven, to misery's brink, till wrenched of every stay but heaven he ruined sink. Even thou who mournst the daisy's fate, that fate is thine, no distant date, stern ruin's ploughshare drives elate full on thy bloom, till crushed beneath the furrow's weight shall be thy doom. Robert Burns End of section 25 Read by Kara Schallenberg on October 19, 2006 in Oceanside, California